Hey, 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 it's a brand new day on Gillen Farms. I am Johnny, and uh, it has been quite a while since I've been over here and checked on the uh, feeders and things like that, so I'm going to do that real quick, and I've got a lot of stuff to do today, so this is going to be a day of chores. So, anyway, let's... Uh, Let's go down here. There's been quite a lot of activity in the food plot. Um, even though the food plot is basically the weed plot. Because um, I have not planted it. This is the area that I did all the dozing that you saw earlier in the year. Where I was dozing out and things like that. This is the, the actual food plot. And... Uh, You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's gone. There's a bunch of turkeys right there running across. So this, this plot has basically gone to seed. I want you to look at this clover. So the clover has made a comeback. And that's all this down in here. And it's come, made a comeback in all these weeds and stuff like that. So what I'm thinking I'm going to be able to do, just brush hog it. Hey, y'all. So what I've been doing is I've been deleting um, photos off of SD cards for oh, about an hour and 15 minutes at this point. Thousands of photos. These cameras will have four or 5,000 photos on them. And then whenever you have to delete them, it's like you delete them in batches of 499. So it takes quite some time to delete all of the photos. So what I'm doing right now is I've got a camera that is actually right here on a mineral lick, where the mineral lick is actually um, has actually melted and gone away. So I'm gonna have to bring another mineral block out here and set it up. But the camera that I've got out here is showing the wrong date and time. It's showing like a year 2101, and it's showing the uh, actual uh, time as being always being like 6.45 a.m. or something like that, no matter what time of the day it is. So the fix per the company is to actually take that camera, put a download a uh, program into an SD card take the SD card or the the card yeah it's an SD card take the card put it in the camera let the camera run with the card in it and then that will uh, upgrade the uh, camera so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that camera down which is this one right here and I'm going to replace it with this camera right here so this is another cellular trail camera and uh, that way I'll be able to start getting photos of what is using this area right here. So I'm going to get those switched out real quick and then I'll be back. Most of this part of what I've got to do today is done. Now it's time to go and work on the rest of what I've got to do today. I have just arrived at where the cattle are. Oh yeah, I ate a Jose's today and it was, oh, it was fantastic. My favorite little hole in the wall Mexican restaurant in Tahlequah. So anyway, I am out here where the cattle are right now and I am looking around and I am seeing that this place is pretty burnt up. I mean, they have eaten what they can eat out of this. It is eaten up. So, the cattle are going to get a move for sure. Because this, this side of it's done. 
Now, it's been since I was here just the other day from the video that you probably just watched because I'm trying to get these caught up. Uh, that was, oh, let's see, this is Tuesday, and that was last Thursday, maybe? Thursday morning early is last time I was here, and there was a lot of grass in here then. But, you know, if we get days and days and days and days and days without any rain uh, and 100 degree temperatures every day, this is what you get. You get burnt up pasture. So let's move them. Sug, come on. Come on, Sug, Sug. Yeah, this second field's not even really worth them being in. Transition paddock, there's not much in there. There's a little bit, but not a lot. There's more than where they are, that's for sure. But not enough to, you know. So let me run them over here. So come on, come on, let's go. Come on. Sug, come on. Sug, 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 come on. Sug, 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 come on. All right, I'm gonna bring them out in here. And this won't last them any time either because there's just, you can tell it's just burnt up. I mean, they'll be able to eat some, but not a lot in this area. Yeah, it's not good. It is what it is. There's doves. That's pretty exciting. Dove season starts here in a couple of days. Look at the dust trail with them cattle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. All right, we got them all at one time. Some of them are heading straight for the pond right now, which they have a big pond over there where they're at, but, you know, they're, they're heading for this pond down here. So it looks like they're grazing. Looks like they're excited for what's out here. So I'm going to let them graze it out. I mean, it is what it is. You can't get around it.
been falling over there by the hot wire. There it goes. Out of here. So I've got uh, the cattle to where they can get into this paddock. So there's no grass per se in here, but maybe they can scrounge in here. I will be feeding hay before you know it. Uh, probably be start feeding hay in about a week at this point. Bad time. Not good. You know, I, I asked him, I said, uh, if, like I said, two Sundays ago, I said, hey, uh, do you think you guys can, can get to the hay pretty soon? And uh, they cut it the next Friday. They bailed it on Saturday, which was last Saturday when we were at the uh, Ozark Homesteading Expo. While I was there walking around having fun with everyone, the, the hay was being bailed. So it's always nice to have good friends uh, to help you out. So they got it all bailed up, and uh, they didn't have any equipment failures. So, you know, and they, they charge a, a, a really real realistic fee to, to do the hay. So, so it's a win-win, you know. We get, we get some of this stuff done. They get some, you know, some stuff, and uh, just a win-win, folks. But anyway, so let me get started on uh, rowing all this hay up. I've actually already rowed. A few bales way back over there next to those trees. I've already rode a few bales up over there. But uh yeah, let me uh let me get busy. Here's a fun one for you. How many bales do you think it made based on that flyover? So leave it in the comments, folks, because I'm not going to state how many bales it was until the next uh, video or something like that. So anyway, how many bales did it make, folks? All right, folks, I want to show you the setup today for moving hay. So what I've got here is we've got a bale spear on the rear of the tractor and we have a bale spear on the front of the tractor 
Now this is not the uh, same Kubota tractor that you see me using over where the cattle are. This is actually a uh, tractor that I borrow from uh, some very good friends of ours <laughs> that also live down here near the hay field. Uh, so I just borrow this little tractor off of them and it's really nice to have good friends. And uh, my wife and I are very blessed to have very good friends. All right, folks, here's the plan. I've already actually moved all of the hay off of this field right here. And I moved it off of a, you know, I moved part of it off that field, part of it off the field in the back. So all I'm doing is just rowing the hay to make it easier to move. Well, it's done got hot. So, uh, having had two heat strokes in the past, when it gets hot, I, I go home or I go do something else. So what I've got is I've got um, a bale of hay there and then I've got a smaller bale of hay up here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put, I need to take some, since I'm going to check on the cows right now, since it's been three days since I've seen them, I'm gonna uh, try to put these bales on the back of the truck so I can just take them with me. So let's see how that works out. sun where you can see me that's another great thing about a flatbed so you can see you know two round bells on the back of it one of them's a little small but i think i could have got two full size on there just the same the hang off would be a little bit more but if you got it strapped down real good it ain't going nowhere so anyway since i'm uh, leaving the cow or the hay field anyway and going to where the cattle are I might as well take two bales with me I don't even really need the tractor to get these off I'll probably use it but uh, well that back one I'll probably just unstrap it and let it fall so it'll just fall off and the other one I could just roll off if I wanted to 
so you know that's uh that's good things about these old flatbed trucks like this so anyway i guess i'll head over there we'll see what's going on with the cattle again all right folks before i leave the field with the with the bales of hay what i wanted to do uh, i wanted to show you something so you know i was talking about how the the hay could get too mature and basically go no no good okay that's because there's a lot of this in it okay this is uh some people call it brome i usually call it broom's hedge um and what it does is it will go from a from a little clump of grass and then like overnight it would just shoot up like this so this field had you know after i looked at it the, you know one, the last time it was actually up about no oh, yay tall okay so overnight it shot up and as soon as it hits hits its peak growth it starts doing what they call flowering and you see that right there that's the flower and what it does is it'll blow off and just blow around well when it gets to that stage it's not palatable to the cattle so you've got to catch it while it's growing but not flowering so that's what happened i mean we we caught it uh well here's a little piece that's kind of left over that got missed we caught it about yay high right here okay so it's not flowered but it was you know getting ready to so anyway let's see if we can get this hay it's on the back of the truck here over to where the cattle are so anyway heading that way okay folks i have just arrived at where the cattle are and i can actually see a deer uh, i have just trod off right here is a buck, a little buck. Yeah, it looks like it trotted off. But anyway, I'm going to show you how burning up everything is. Oh, there they go. Right over there. A whole bunch of them. Running that way. <laughs> Alright. I want you to see how burnt up everything is. Now, You'll remember just a few days ago, this was just lush, lush, beautiful green grass. Let me turn this air down a little bit. It's hot out here. And, uh, well, the grass is all gone away. And there come all the cattle. Just running to get up here to see if I'm going to give them something to eat. All right, folks, I'm going to explain how a a drought system works how the drought works here in uh, oklahoma texas arkansas missouri etc etc um, a lot of folks in a lot of areas are used to getting rain at least once every week to two weeks throughout the year there are a lot of places in the country that 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 that, that actually happens oh, excuse me my hip is giving me problems <laughs> So anyway, having, having that system to where you get rain every little bit keeps your grass growing. Uh, I know there are areas up in the northeastern part of the country and, you know, somewhere, some places up in the northwest and uh, things like that. Well, here in the Midwest, we have what I call a two-week drought cycle. The way the two-week drought cycle works is the same way as it works whenever you're getting paid for working okay so if you're getting paid say, say you have a uh, say you pay your rent weekly and uh, you buy your groceries weekly all right so you get paid and for two weeks you have plenty of money so you have no problem paying your rent paying your grocery bill etc etc so then after two weeks what happens is all of a sudden for whatever reason your check doesn't come so all of a sudden you can't pay your your rent and you can't pay for your groceries and things like that so it, it get, it's mighty lean times at that point 
Well, that same thing works with drought. So you're going along, you're getting rain, you're getting rain, you're getting rain, bam. Two weeks, no rain, 100 plus degrees every day. You get what we have right now. So you saw in previous videos, you saw where we had plenty of grass. I mean, plenty. It was the best grass we've had all year. Uh, we're able to move the cattle between paddock to paddock and just, you know, we were able to make it all summer long because every week or, you know, week and a half, we would get, you know, some kind of rain. Well, we haven't had rain in about, at this point, about three weeks right now. And it's been upper 90s to over 100 the entire time. S several days that were windy. What that does is that sucks all the moisture out. So this is what we're left with. So, I mean, this is all that lush grass. This is where everything was so lush and beautiful and wonderful and cows were all just lollygagging in it and stuff like that. Well, it is burnt smooth up now. So that's where we're at. But anyway, I think this video has probably gone long enough. Uh, I moved a couple of bales, um, moved some in the field, things like that. Uh, I actually fed the cattle here, fed them a bale, so they're on hay now. Uh, took two bale of hay to my brother uh, for his, he's got those little miniature donkeys, so I took some hay to him, two bale. And, uh, but, yep, we're in the drought. So anyway, if you like this type of video, like and subscribe. We'll continue to bring more content in the future as available. And as always, everybody, God bless. And pray for rain for, for the Midwest.